mess around, draw that whole pen if you look and sit. Mess around, draw that whole pen if you look and sit. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be trying vegan mac and cheese. Now y'all, I made probably like two variations of vegan mac and cheese recipes for Thanksgiving. Now they were okay, but they won't, they won't non-vegan approved. And I like for all of my food to be non-vegan approved because that's when you know it's really, really good. So this mac and cheese has been kind of like a uphill battle, but I am about to try really my own recipe, something that I'm thinking of because I haven't found one that was like yet. So that's what we are doing today. And I am going to bring you all along with me so you all get to see the ups, the downs. Hopefully it's good. I really hope it's good because I'm trying to master it. I don't even know if we eat macaroni and cheese for Christmas. We don't really do like a bunch of traditional dinners all the time for holidays. But if we have a macaroni and cheese for Christmas, I want to make sure it's right and it's not vegan approved. So I already have water over here. So let's go ahead and get this water boiled. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the stove on high to get the water boiling and whenever I boil my food, I always like to add a little bit of salt in there. That's just how we did when we were growing up. And really the salt helps it come to a boil, but also it helps season the noodles a little bit. So the water is coming to a boil slowly but surely. I normally put it on this one up front, which is kind of like the power boil. Um, I, so, is it I or I? Can somebody tell me that? Because I really be wondering, like sometimes I'm like, I got the, the pan on the aisle, but it's, I be hearing some people say I. Somebody tell me which one it is so I can say the right thing. But anywho, got the water going, it's starting to boil, but I'm going to be using these elbow noodles. I'm going for elbow noodles. I really don't care what noodles are used for macaroni and cheese, but I have some people in my family that they prefer the elbows. They only want, like my sister, she feels like macaroni and cheese only needs to be an elbow. She's gonna get me to put this in this video, but I know she likes elbow noodles, and if I'm practicing this recipe, and if I have it for the holidays, I want her to try it, because her opinion matters because my sister is a very picky eater, so if she says it's good, it's good. So I'm about to put these elbow noodles in here and get them to boil. I always cook my noodles according to the package instructions. However, they say cook uncovered for nine to 11 minutes. I got a feeling that it might take longer than that, but we'll see. And I'm gonna just take this spoon and give it a little stir. So I did go ahead and put a timer up here for the noodles just to make sure I stay on track and don't forget about them. But I'm just gonna keep an eye on them. I normally like to check my noodles and squeeze them to see if, just make sure your hands are clean if you're doing this. Like, I just feel like I had to say that because. <laughs> Y'all, I have seen some stuff in my lifetime and I just feel like I had to say that. Make sure your hands clean when you check your noodles, but I know we just, check them to see if they break off or not, if they're soft. That's normally what I do. But you guys, I really feel like macaroni and cheese is really like simple to make, but it's simple to make. It's so simple to make, but when somebody messes it up, when you mess it up, y'all ever, I actually have had some experiences with like somebody cooking macaroni and cheese and it just won't good. Like what do you do? Like do you just tell them like this ain't it, take it back, go do it again, or you just be like, Y'all, whenever I have nasty food, and I hope like nobody's watching this video and I ever tried their food and I did, it just feels so bad. <laughs> Anywho, whenever I like taste somebody's food and it's like nasty, I pull one of those folded mechanisms like where you keep it on a plate and then you eat what you eat off the plate or what you won't eat off the plate and then you just hit them with the fold. You fold the plate and go put it in the trash. Y'all done done it so many times. Not to my mom though. My mom's food is really, really good. But I have been like, 
I have had some experiences where I had to hit them with the fold, fold plate mechanism. How do you tell people that food ain't good? Like, I just, look, if y'all ever had my food and y'all tell me it ain't good, it would hurt my feelings. Like, just tell them, like, it ain't good. I don't know. But I tell you this, y'all, so I am not going to be a meme this year. I am not gonna be that person that's practicing the macaroni and cheese on Christmas. <laughs> I tell you that much. I am not gonna be that person because you, you just don't get it. So the noodles are still boiling. The timer says I got two minutes left, but that's why I don't go by all of the package instructions. Sometimes, like, sometimes you have to use your own discernment. Those noodles are not soft enough to be taken off within two minutes so i'm gonna just let them cook probably a little bit longer i'll keep you all posted on how much longer i'm going to boil them over what the package says but they're not soft enough yet i can look at them until you and that's another thing about macaroni and cheese like i said before it is kind of simple to make but you can mess it up easily and also it requires a lot of babysitting in my in my opinion it's not like you can just until you get it in the pan because we are gonna bake our macaroni and cheese today i grew up on baked macaroni and cheese i'm not a huge fan of like just eating it stir it up on top of the stove i need you to throw it in the pan sprinkle a little cheese on top let me have a little brown crust now i don't know if this vegan macaroni and cheese is gonna give me that little brown crust but we're gonna try because i need the edges to look a little brown <laughs> Y'all, that's just how I grew up with my macaroni and cheese. Like I said, I like it baked. I like for somebody to put it in the oven and bake it. And that's why I got this little aluminum pan. It's just something about food when it comes in this aluminum pan. When you like have gatherings and stuff and you see people put their food in this little aluminum pan, it just, it just makes me feel like the food about to be good. See, that's the timer, y'all. But I know it's not done. It's getting soft, but not quite soft yet. I think I'm gonna put three more minutes on the timer and then they should be done. Yeah, I'm gonna just throw this away. Okay, so these noodles boiled for a total. I did an extra minute on top of the three. So in total, they boiled for 15 minutes. Now I am about to drain them. I like to drain and rinse my noodles. So I'm actually going to rinse out this pan before I put the noodles back in here and start mixing some of the cheeses and spices up. And all I did was take paper towel and wipe it out. Uh, I just don't like that little white film. I don't know, if you all cook, you all might know what I'm talking about. When you boil stuff, sometimes you get a little white film on the outer ring. I don't like it, so I like to get it out of there. And just dry the bottom off, cause you don't want to mess up your stove top. So first I'm gonna pour these noodles in here. These have been rinsed and drained with cold water. So I like to make sure I put seasoning on my noodles because I feel like when the seasoning is touching the noodles, it sticks to it a little bit better, but we're still gonna add seasonings like when we add the cheese sauce and all of that. But I have found that sometimes when you actually put the seasoning on top of the noodles, for some reason you can taste it better. So that's what we're about to do. And once you have the seasonings in there, just make sure you stir it well. And that's what it looks like. So I like to add my cheese sauce like while it's in the pot. Now y'all, I went ahead and opened this like earlier today because I wanted to know what it looked like on the inside. And the reason being is, I spent probably like $2 for this right here. Hold on, there you go. 
And this is just the Daya brand. Daya is pretty like a popular brand in the vegan community. Most vegans have heard of this before. They have like pizza um, and a bunch of other things. They actually have their own shredded cheeses, which we will be using different a different brand for shredded cheeses today. But they actually sell this in Food Line. So if you want to try it, you can pick it up at Food Line. But of course, like Whole Foods and those other places have it as well. Now, this is their deluxe cheese sauce. Now, I have tried this before and it tasted okay. I didn't try it baked though. That's, that's the thing. We, we here, we talked about this. <laughs> so, like I said, I think I paid like $6 for this thing. And I was like, why am I paying $6 for this again? But it actually comes with three. Hold on. It comes with three of these packs. Now, I think I might only need two. But we need this extra third one we will because that is a lot of noodles. So we'll see. I like a cheesy macaroni and cheese. And when it bakes, sometimes you want to make sure that it's fully lubricated because you don't want no dry macaroni and cheese. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding two of these in because I know for sure that I need two of them. cheese sauce worked into that those noodles and it required a little bit of oomph because that cheese sauce was really really thick so i think i want to put a little bit of nutritional yeast in there i am a very aroma type of person like the food has to smell a certain way for me and i feel like it needs a little bit of nutritional yeast but first i'm gonna go ahead and preheat this oven to 375 because that's the temperature that i'm going to bake on if you all don't know nutritional yeast adds like a cheese flavor to different types of foods a lot of plant-based eaters use a lot of nutritional yeast for that purpose i'm just I just have this Bob's Red Meal brand. They have several brands of nutritional yeast and they each actually come in like seasoning containers too, but this is what I'm using today. It looks like this. I'm only gonna add a little bit because nutritional yeast can be very strong. cheeses we are going to be using the Violife brand of course you got to have the cheddar style and I'm going to add some mozzarella in it and I'm actually going to also add some Kobe Jack strips I have tried this brand before I like it the only thing the only con that I have to say about vegan cheese and it's probably because it's not really cheese real cheese it takes a long, 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 long time to melt. So that's another good reason why I like to bake it and make sure it's mixed in. Um, yeah, it takes a really, really long time to melt. So I'm going to add these in and I'm really gonna eyeball it. Of course, a good amount of this and a good amount of this. I'm going to do probably about half the amount of the Kobe J as I do as the uh, Now, if you all thought that I was just gonna 
only do that to my macaroni and cheese. I don't know who you think I am. <laughs> but we are getting ready to add some milk and butter. And I like to do that. When I used to make macaroni and cheese, I like to do it while it's inside the pan. So let's do that now. And y'all, let's let's hope that this macaroni and cheese tastes good because it's looking good. But I just want it to taste good too. So. So today I'm going to be using these um, salted butter sticks. This is vegan butter if you all were wondering. Vegan. This brand is actually good for vegan butter. These butter sticks are really thick. It's what they look like. And I am just going to cut them up in little squares so that we can put it in the pan. And now I'm going to pour the macaroni and cheese on top. The milk I'll be using today is almond milk and it is unsweetened almond milk, so. I don't know, I bought some of this in there. So I like to do like this because it helps even the milk out. I am going to add some black pepper on top. And you don't have to worry about this cheddar cheese on top burning because it takes so long for it to melt. It should be fine. And this is what the macaroni and cheese looks like before we put it in the oven to bake it. So I'm going to let this macaroni and cheese bake for as long as it needs to. I'm starting off with 30 minutes just because I kind of want to keep an eye on it. And if I see if it needs a little bit more moisture, I will probably add in um, I might add in that last sauce if I feel like it needs a little bit more moisture, but I feel like the butter and the milk should, should do its job once it starts dispersing and all of that good stuff, and I will give it another stir. And yeah, so now we just play the waiting game and hope for this. <laughs> okay, you guys, so if you hear something in the background, that's just my air fryer going off, but this is the macaroni and cheese after baking for 30 minutes. I'm gonna show you all a close up. This is what it looks like. It definitely needs to be stirred up, so that is exactly what I am about to do. Ooh, they got that cheesy sauce. So I tried a few of the noodles that were left on the spoon while ago and I feel like it just needs a little bit more salt and a little bit more pepper, but it actually tastes pretty good so far. So let's hope it continues to taste good as we get to the end of finishing the whole macaroni and cheese up. Okay, so we are about to put it back in the oven for another 30 minutes and it should be done. I am so excited, but I probably shouldn't dance too soon because they might. Okay, you guys, stuff on working, so I gotta start whispering a little bit. I'm talking loud. Got my fingers crossed. <laughs> Y'all just can't see it. <laughs> okay, I get excited when it comes to food. Let's hope it. 
tastes good. Okay. Yeah, I'm still on it. Y'all, it smells good. And she got a little scissor to it. Let me show you. Let me show you. Hopefully. It looks good. Okay, so I probably should be letting it sit for probably like a good five minutes, 10 minutes, a little bit. Just let it sit before you dig in. But y'all, I'm really anxious to try it, so I'm gonna go ahead and dig in anyway. So I got me a little taste demo. This is actually an ice cream scoop bowl, but we gonna put it in here and a fork, but let me scoop me some out, hold on. Okay, you guys, so I got my little serving. That's what it looks like now. She ain't get the brown on her like I wanted her to. I feel like if I would have baked it longer, it probably would have gotten brown. I told my voice down a little bit. I feel like it would have gotten brown, but I didn't want to dry the macaroni and cheese out. So let's just see what we working with. Hold on, y'all. The third time the charm. Hold on. Okay, y'all. I think I found it. The only thing is, I could have added a little bit more salt. I was trying to go easy on the salt because Stefan has been watching his salt intake. So, y'all. I found it. This is actually really, really good. Like, really. I think my sister would like this, y'all. This is actually pretty good. That bite was really cheesy. Y'all, it's so cheesy that you can see the little cheese residue at the bottom. And yeah, that's macaroni cheese. Okay, I do got to tell y'all this though. So you see how it baked evenly. So when I used to make macaroni and cheese, I used to like to put egg on top because you know that's how you keep it together and then you actually got the part, the macaroni and cheese. Y'all know what I'm talking about. When it's sticking together and you got the, the get your piece of macaroni and cheese out and it be sitting there like a little square. Next time I'm gonna get some just egg and try brushing the just egg on top to see if you keep it together. That's the only thing I think I'm missing. I think I would have loved another layer of cheese on top, but you know what y'all? When Stefan get on his break, I'm gonna let him taste it and let him tell y'all what he thinks. That's good, cause he gonna tell you if it's good or not, and if it ain't, he gonna give you the real deal. So hold on. Okay you guys, so I got Stefan on his break and he brushed me, so let me go on here. The cheese, uh, the cheese for the cheese, though. The diet. <laughs> I like it. It's better than the last time, ain't it? It's about the same to me. It does not. I'm afraid you didn't like it last time. I liked it last time, too. She still like mac and cheese. I told them that the only thing I wanted to do was like put the egg on top if we had just egg to make it, mm -hmm. you know, the kind that you cut into. Mm -hmm. Y'all, he's still eating, so I guess it's good. Okay, you guys, so that is it for this video. I hope you all, again, enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And I will see you all in my next video. See ya. Show your plate. <laughs> No greens. <laughs> so it's like a a, a tray that you get at somebody cookout. As you all can see, he got a whole serving size on his plate. We just had some vegan nuggets and french fries. Probably for dinner. I don't know what we're going to do for dinner, but we might figure out something to go with this macaroni and cheese. So that's just good. But for real, see y'all. <laughs>